again. Great music. Please be seated. So I've been restoring, I've been restoring this old Honda motorcycle, okay? I've been restoring this old Honda motorcycle, uh, 1985. And so, um, you know, the mistake I made is, is months ago, I just like started tearing into it. You know what I mean? And it wouldn't run. It hadn't run for 20 years. And so I started doing all these things, things that my dad was a mechanic and things that I kind of know about. But I just couldn't get, I couldn't get it to stay running. I could, I, there was a carburation problem, okay? And so I would do this and do that. And finally, yesterday morning, I was sitting there and was frustrated. And I just went online and found the manual. <laughs> you know what I mean? The manual and YouTube videos. So there, there was a whole YouTube video about the fuel regulator and the vacuum lines. I was going, oh, I didn't realize it was a vacuum thing. Oh, okay. And um, uh, I was thinking about that. And so I got it running yesterday. That was kind of a big victory. You know, it's not perfect. But, um, you know, it made me think about that, that maybe it's a maturity thing. Fair enough, guys, especially guys. I think uh, for guys, um, we are so reluctant to, like, actually get the manual out, aren't we? We're like, yeah, I can figure this out. It's just carburation. Yeah, okay. Um, it made me think about what I'm talking about today, and that's about this manual. It's about the manual that I think should come uh, with every human being and that everybody who calls themselves a Christian should be reading this book, and that's my point today, and I'm not going to back off of it, okay? As I said, in the United Methodist Church in which I was baptized and born and, and grew up in, I don't ever remember a preacher telling me that. I never remember a pastor saying to me strongly and forcefully, you need to read your Bibles, so guess what I'm saying to you, church, because I love you. Do you know what I'm saying to you? You need to read your Bible. It's the owner's manual, and that's not just a bumper sticker. It's not just a bumper sticker, and it's not some cutesy, pithy saying. It's like this. Uh, it's like it's life's instruction manual, okay? And you need to read it carefully because it contains ne necessary operating instructions. It was funny this week. Um, I, got, I got my Bible out. This is my Bible that I have had with me almost every single sermon since 1985. A woman in Corning, Iowa gave this to me before I went to Louisiana when I was 20 years old. Anna McLean, one of the saints of the Corning United Methodist Church, gave me this Bible, and I didn't really realize what she'd given me until I got to Louisiana. And so I've had this, and I usually have a cover on it, because some years ago it started falling apart, and so I duct taped it, right? Like, why wouldn't I? And there were people in the Waukee Church that were like, man, that Bible looks terrible, right? And I didn't care. I mean, I guess I could. I've got some New York Yankees duct tape. I guess I could retape it. But um, so I've had this cover. So Alana got me this cover so I could cover it. And I've been using this. And so um, and I knew I was going to be talking about the Bible. And some of you in your Bibles, do you have little notes and different things stuck in your Bible? Do you? Maybe not. Not yet. Maybe you will. I mean, I hope someday to give this Bible to my daughter and she can give it to my grandchildren. I hope she has some. If that's God's will, she will. And they'll say, this is your grandpa's Bible. But I was going through it, and, I, and I, there's a pocket here on the cover. Everybody with me? And so I pulled it out like, what's this? Oh, guess what this is? This is part of a manual. These are the break-in procedures for a Harley-Davidson motorcycle that just happened to be in my Bible. Where else would they be? Are you with me, church? <laughs> All the important things are here. Break-in procedure. Um, the, point, the point is... This, this is our book, Christians. If you call yourself a Christian, if you've joined the church, if you're baptized, understand that there are other faiths like Buddhists and Hindus and, and Muslims and other faith people, you know that they, they, they're not that, that pleased with us, we, we Christians, because some of them look at us and say, this is your book, Christians, why don't you read it? Oh, well, because we've got a preacher that will stand up and tell us what we need to know, right? No. No, this is your book. This is your book to read. And that's what this whole message is about. Um, it's a manual. And that's the point I'm making. More specifically, I'm saying this. To hear God and to learn about God, you need to take a Bible, either a hard copy one or one on your phone or an audio Bible. You need to open it and listen. How will you ever know about the promises of God if you never read them for yourself? How will you ever be found by God? If you don't take that step in reading what God has to say, and let me unpack that just a little bit, because we, we being who we are, many times we want to give ourselves credit for that and say, well, you know, I found God in 1987. No, you didn't. God found you. Are you with me, church? And I'm saying that how can God find you? How can God 
find you or how can you, you, you find your circumstances in life if you don't open the book and read it? Because any given Sunday, you, you might come in here and you've got different needs than maybe than what I'm preaching about. I've actually had people say that. People say, well, how'd you like the sermon on Sunday? And somebody will leave and go, well, he didn't really preach. He didn't really preach about what I needed to hear. Yeah, fair enough, right? There's almost 400 of you every week. I can't hit everybody's individual things. I mean, unless you want me to, we could have a list like a scoreboard, right? <laughs> say, okay, Lisa Bowers, we're going to talk to you right now, Lisa. Here's from your, <laughs> here's what Ken told me. No, can't do that. Can't do that, right? I spend a lot of times with Josh and Laura, but I can't do that anymore, so... The point is, how, how can you find hope? How can you find encouragement? How can you find guidance? How can you find wisdom? How can you find truth? How can you find your way? How can you find any of this if you don't open it? If you don't open it and read it, right? And I would go even further. It's like eating. It's like eating. We're all in the habit of eating at least two meals a day, okay? So if you want to feast on God's Word, and you're only going to come in here once a week and eat at the big spiritual buffet, and then you're going to starve the rest of the week, really? Doesn't seem very smart to me, Christians. And so my message is, take it, open it, and read it. Maybe you've got your own Bible. Maybe you don't. Maybe your Bible looks like this, right? Maybe your Bible, you've got a Bible. Maybe it was given to you when you graduated from high school or from confirmation. Maybe it was given to you for a wedding present. Whatever it is, got your name stamped on it in gold. Has anybody got one of those Bibles? Got the little leatherette cover, right? Okay? Get it out. You're going to have to. And in fact, if you don't have a Bible, um, uh, if, if there's somebody here that doesn't have a Bible, we have 100 Bibles that we're given. They're all around here. And I know you might be embarrassed, but you need to know that I am so serious about this message that I'm willing to say, hey, oh, Dan, you've got a Bible. Sorry. Okay? So if Doug Nelson's over, I grew up in the Methodist church. I don't have a Bible. Right. Now you do, Doug. Okay? And I think you probably do. You can give that to somebody else. I'm preaching this message about how important it is to read your Bible. And so I had somebody that was inspired by last week's message um, in this week bought uh, 100 Bibles. And I'm giving them away. Why? Because this is important. I'm not just going to stand up here and tell you that you need to open your Bible and not help you, not give you away. That would be cruel. That's how important this is. It's how important it is. And understand a few things then about this book. It's not a good luck charm, okay? It's not a good luck charm. Like, man, life's been going really bad and I didn't win the Powerball. Maybe I should carry my Bible around with me. No, it's not going to work because it's not a good luck charm. It's not a talisman that keeps evil away from you, okay? And it's not just a, 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 a pretty gift or a decoration to set on the, on the table. As I've already said, it's a book of instructions. It's a book of instructions and it's a book of inspiration. And I know that there's some parts of it that are confusing, so if you've never read the Bible, don't start out in Leviticus. Fair enough? You might get confused. There's lots of don'ts in there. It says that you're not supposed to wear clothes with rips in them or you'll be stoned to death. Yikes, right? There's a lot of laws in there, the Old Covenant, that confuse people. You know, like, like, like children, you need to honor your mother, father and mother. And if you don't honor your father and mother, you'll be put to death. Yikes, right? I shouldn't have lived this long, you know? <laughs> And some of you the same way. The point is, you may not want to start in Leviticus. You may want to start in the New Testament, the New Covenant. Because I know, I know it can be difficult to read. Especially, look, this is my bias. I, I run into people that are trying to read the King James Version. I get it. There's these and thous. It's the Queen's, Queen's English. It was written in 1611. It's hard to understand. I get it. That's why you can, you can get something like this Bible is a New International Version. I read from a New International Version. Some of you like the message. Laura, you just bought the message version of the Bible. Is it easier to read than the King James? Oh, yeah. Absolutely it is. And it's God's Word. It is God's Word, and it makes it easier to get into it if you're not being frustrated. I gave you a card today. Make sure you get one of these. Every week, I spend time putting together some, some scriptures or tips. This week, the handout I gave you are tools, because faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So here are tools. You can go to Bible Gateway. You can go to the Glow Bible. If you don't want to read, you can get this and listen to it every day. How about that? You can listen to it while you drive, while you eat breakfast, or whatever, and there's a bunch of other other tools there to help you use your Bible because the point is how how are you going to know God's promises if you don't read them or listen to them for yourself you can't just rely upon me or any other preacher or Sunday school teacher to come in and feed you it's time for you to feed yourself right fair enough pick it up and read it 
the Bible, God's Word, given by God through faithful men and women to us, and it still resonates and it's still relevant to this day. No matter what some haters say, no matter what some people want to say, it's a fairy tale, it's fiction, it's old, it was just a bunch of old white men. No, it wasn't. The people in the Middle East were white? I don't think so, right? No, it's God's Word and it's alive. It's where we turn to find out what God says, the Bible. You want to know what God has to say? Read the Bible. It's where we turn to find out what God has to say about life and about living. It's where we turn to find out what God has to say about God's desires for your life, for our life, and what it means to live. It's where we turn to find out those promises I've been talking about. How can you share a promise with God if you've never, ever read one? Huh? See, this is logical to me. And I think this is non-negotiable, by the way. I think that anybody that's a member of the church... And anybody that's audacious enough to call themselves a follower of Jesus, a student of Jesus, meaning a Christian, anybody that claims that title, reading the Bible is non-negotiable. It's part of the deal. It just is part of the deal. And again, I'll tell you, nobody ever told me that when I was growing up in the United Methodist Church, and I don't think I ever, ever, ever said that to a congregation in 30 years of being given the privilege to lead a congregation, but I'm changed, and I'm telling you right now, you need to read your Bibles, church. Are you with me? And I can't stand over you and I'm not, it's not an authoritarian thing. I'm just giving you the word as I understand it, is that God speaks there. Now, look, I've had people say to me things like this. Really, I've, had, I've heard this several times in my life um, as a pastor. They've said, yeah, quote, yeah, pastor, I know. I mean, I believe, sure, I believe in God and Jesus and all that stuff, right? I be, I'm religious as the next person. But, you know, I'm just not really into reading the Bible. And I always want to say to them, Really? Really? Because I'm a New York Yankees baseball fan, and I can't read enough about my favorite team, right? Really? You're, you're, you're into, yeah, you're into God and Jesus and all that stuff, and you're religious as the next person, but you're just not into reading the Bible? Really? Really? Because every professional person that I know, whether a doctor or a lawyer or, or an architect or anybody that works a career that wants to get better, they're reading articles and they're reading books trying to better themselves. Don't you agree? How would you like to go to a doctor that says, hey, you know what, I'd really like to help you out here, Dave, and uh, you've got all these ailments, and uh, I believe in health, and I believe in healing you, Dave, but you know, I'm just really not into reading all the latest research. So bring in the leeches. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's do some bloodlet. No, no, we wouldn't stand for that. It doesn't even make sense. I'm, not, I'm just not into reading. I, I thought about this, you know, any girlfriend or boyfriend, but any girlfriend, that has a boyfriend? Is she going to say, you know, I'm really into you and I love you and all that, but I really could care less about reading your love notes and love letters. Does that make sense? Because see, God has sent us this letter. That's the Bible. And that's the way to understand it. And yeah, it's a love letter. Not like romantic. It's a love letter. It's a love letter that comes from God. And I'm going to say it again, church. It is our book. It is ours, Christians. It's our book. We should be proud of it. We should. You know that the Bible is the best-selling book of all time, period? Period. There's no other book. No matter what Donald Trump says, his book is not sold more than the Bible. Okay? He's been funny saying that stuff. It, the Bible is translated and printed into over 2,018 different languages. 2,000! 2, 2,000 different languages. People can, can read the Word of God. And I read this statistic that every day, every day in the United States... There are over 170,000 Bibles purchased or given away. I'm like, wow, doesn't mean they're being read, but they're, they're, they're being given away, right? We got 100, well, we got 96 of them, 96 or 95 to give away. I've only given away five Bibles, which I guess is okay, but they're here, to, they're here for you. So the point is, you got you to gotta read this. It's ours. It's a personal communication. I want you to think of it that way. It is a personal communication from God through faithful men and women, through the ages, to you, to you. And when you read it, God will find you. And when you read it, you're going to read it, and you may read a passage that you've read a hundred times, but your life circumstances change, and you're going to find that God's going to help you find yourself right there in that circumstance. Really, it's that personal, you know? Now, like I said, you need your personal and personal copy. 
in it, and, and you can get one. If you don't want to go buy one, fine, don't go buy one. You can get a free one right here today, okay? I showed you mine. I, I, I can't imagine doing my job without it. I want you to turn to Romans 10, okay? Romans 10, we were already there once before, but Romans 10, that's where I read out of uh, early this morning for when we first came in here um, for worship, okay? Romans 10. So you turn there or you flip there on your Glow Bible, right? And here's what it says, because this is that scriptural basis again. And I already talked about this a little bit, but hear it again. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Faith comes by hearing. Okay, look at that. Does this mean, does this mean that our faith is built and grown when we read the Bible and when we take time to consider what it says? Is that what this means? Yes. That's what it means. And this is, again, another way for me to say why this is so important, that you need to read it, okay? You do. You need to start. And is, is this saying that you read that's up here, is this saying that through Jesus Christ, God's Holy Spirit will work to help us get it? Yes, it does. Because, again, I'm going to go back to the fact that just like Jesus' disciples in John 6, there are sometimes times, as Jesus' disciples, we look at a reading, we look at something, and we go, man, this is hard. This is difficult. Who can, who can get this? Who can do it? Who can believe it? Right? But what, what God says is that God will convict us with the power of the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit that will even pray for us when we don't have the right words is that God's Spirit will help us get it. God's Spirit will help us to get it. I, I think of it like this. I've been talking about communication, and that's where this message came from, from last week, people being inspired by me talking about, you've got to communicate to God. You've got to communicate. Understand the equation. Is it communicating with God so that God can find you, so that, so that you can know God more? You've got to communicate. And communicate, communicating is not just us talking and God listening. Many times we think it is. But it's talking. For us, we mean prayer. That's what we think of as talking to God. We pray to God. We express our hopes and our dreams and our desires and our frustrations and our anger because God's big enough to handle our anger, right? Even cuss and anger at God. You know God can handle that? God's not going to smite you and leave you a greasy spot in the middle of the road just because you're angry. You need to know that, Okay? He, he loves us. We're his children, all right? My daughter's been mad at me before. I don't know if she's ever cursed. Hmm, we'll see what happens when that happens. But anyway, <laughs> God is perfect. I'm not. But you pray. You express to God. But that's only part of it. The next point in the equation is, is that you need to stop and you need to listen. And the third part is you need to hear, which means process and make sense of the sounds that you're hearing. So see, we stop and we hear this noise and we process it and say, oh, that's the heat. That's the heat. That's the, thank goodness we've got heat coming through these sock things, these ducts. That's what that is. Or maybe you heard somebody crinkling a bulletin or a candy wrapper or whatever. You see, you talk and then you get quiet and you listen and hearing is taking time to process it, to think about it. Hmm, I wonder what that is, right? And then there's a fourth step that you can't miss, and that is you have to respond. You see it up on the screen? That's communication. You have to respond. Responding means you have to do something. Maybe responding to God's word when you're reading it is you're frowning and you're trying to process it, and your response may be to ask more questions. Or your response may be to send Pastor Tom or, or, or your Bible uh, study teacher or your cell group mates a, an, an email. Hey, I don't get this. Can you help me understand? That's a response, and it's an acceptable response. Because after you talk and after you listen and after you hear, then there has to be a response. And maybe the response is a question or maybe the response is an action. Maybe you read that word of God and it, and it gets written upon your heart and that day forward you begin to see life and do life differently. Isn't that amazing? My point is this is communication with God. And no one else can communicate with God for you. Yes, I will pray for you. People weekly, daily say, Pastor, please pray for me. Yes, I will, but it does not absolve you of communicating with God. Are you with me? You've got to do it on your own. And reading the Bible 
is part of communicating because that's part of listening and it's part of hearing. So in this new year, in this new year, so far, so far in January, I've talked about and encouraged you and tried to inspire you to find a new hope, to find a new hope, to work for it and, and to, to have it, a new hope that this year is going to be different than last year, that to this day today is going to be different than tomorrow. And we've talked about new confidence, about living life with confidence in the Lord, finding strength in God. And last week, talked about living with a new purpose and understanding our purpose and we must take steps, is my message today. We must take steps to hear God. And reading God's word is an important, practical, logical place to read and to, to go further in finding this new hope and this new confidence and understanding what God wants. So here's the challenge that I'm going to give you, Grandview Church, for the next 24 days. See if you're up for this challenge. For the next 24 days, I'm going to challenge you to read one chapter of the Gospel of Luke every day. That's it. That's it. I'm not challenging you to give me $1,000 a day. I'm not challenging you to go knock on a stranger's door and invite them to church every day. I'm just saying, hey, in the privacy of your home, one chapter a day, Gospel of Luke. Next 24 days. You know why I picked 24 days? Do you know why? Because there's 24 chapters in the Gospel of Luke. Pretty smart of me, huh? <laughs> 24. I want you to do it. I've heard back from some people since Wednesday that have started doing it. They've commented on it. They say it makes a difference. They said, wow, I've read that story about uh, Jesus' birth and Mary. I've read that story, heard that story a hundred times. But wow, there's some things about it I never really understood. And I'm understanding it now. That's my challenge to you. And here's why I'm going to be more specific. I want, I want you to understand something. It's not magic. This is not magic. Asking you to read a chapter from your Bible of Luke every day for the next 24 days is not magic. You know what it is? It's a method. And we are what? Methodists. This is a method to grow closer to God. It is a method to communicate. It's a method to hear God and what God has to say to you. So here's what you need to do. Okay? I'm going to help you another step. One, give yourself 15 minutes and don't lie and say you don't have 15 minutes of quiet time. Either get up early or go to bed later. Okay? 15 minutes. Take 15 minutes to be quiet. Two, in your 15 minutes, put your hands together, close your eyes, and pray however you pray. Father, calm me down, clear my mind, help me to read your word and to hear it. Ask God to help you. Three, read it and listen. Four, hear it. Means consider and process it. Go back to a sentence. Go back to a word that struck you, right? Maybe you journal. I journal. Maybe you journal. Maybe you, it's okay to write in your Bible, by the way. God doesn't care, okay? You can use a highlighter. You can't. Processes it. Process it. What is God saying? What is he saying to me? Wow, this is hard. Or wow, this is great news. And fifth, do something. Respond. Do something. Either ask a question, clarify it, or go do something. 24 chapters of Luke, one chapter a day for the next 24 days. If you don't have a Bible, come up here after worship and get a Bible because this is important, and I believe that God has told me to tell you this. And so here's my wish, and here's my prayer for you, is that over the next 24 days as you read about Jesus, my prayer is that God will find you and teach you. My prayer is that as you read about how God is and how God works in the very real world, my prayer is that God will grow you. My prayer is that you will grow to know and love God more, that you'll fall in love with God. My prayer for the next 24 days, every day, is going to be that as you read about the love and the power of God shown through the coming of Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Luke, my prayer is that your fears will diminish. My prayer is that your fears will diminish and your faith will increase and your confidence and your hope will increase over the next 24 days. And my prayer is that as you read about how Jesus radically changed the world, my prayer is that your real life will be changed, really. Is that your real life will be changed and that you will know for real real hope and real confidence and that you will cling to some very real promises of God.
this is my prayer for us, church. And let me pray it right now. Lord God, I pray that in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit will intervene and intercede. And I pray, Lord God, for every person that's reading your word in the next 24 days. Lord God, I pray that you fall down upon them like a thunderbolt. I pray, Lord God, like a fire, that you light them up and ignite them in their home or in their car or in their office, wherever they are, light them up, Lord God, and fire them up. I pray this for every person that hears my words this week in Jesus' name. And we pray together as one people with one voice out loud the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I want to invite us to stand up, reach out, and hold on to somebody's hand because that's what we do.